Hello, everybody. Shalom. Glad you could join us again for another installment of the Ephraim International Ministries teaching series. I hope your week has been a blessed week. These this past week since the last time we were able to uh, get together and uh, hope your Sabbath day so far has been a, a blessed Sabbath day and the rest of your day will be blessed too. Hey, guys, today I'm going to continue on talking about Torah and I've entitled uh, this teaching keeping Torah and belief in Christ Yeshua. Keeping Torah and belief in Christ Yeshua. And again, this is based on the teachings of Prophet Tom Decker on his series, Torah. And like I always say, I hope something is said today, guys, that'll help you along your journey to reach the destiny that God has set for your life from the foundations of this world. And before we get started, as we usually do, let's go to God in prayer, and then we'll get into today's teaching. Father God, once again, we approach you. We approach your throne in the name of your Holy Son and our Lord and Savior, the Lord Yeshua, asking you, first of all, Lord God, to forgive us for our sins. And Lord, may the holy blood of Yeshua that he shed on that tree, Lord, let his blood be a cleansing for those sins not only ours, but for the sins of our family too. Lord God, we praise you, we bless you, we worship you, we magnify your name and your name alone. We recognize you as the God of this universe and all other gods are idols. They aren't anything compared to you. You run this universe by your sovereign decisions. And Lord, we just want to tell you how much we want to say thank you to you and we are we're grateful to you for all the blessings you've given to us, the life, health, food, clothes, shelter, transportation, and the list goes on and on. Lord God, we pray your blessings upon this teaching today as these words go forth. Lord, we pray that the Rahakadish, the Holy Spirit, would uh, infill and indwell these words. And as they go out across these uh, airways, this internet link, that they will become seeds. They enter into the ears of the listeners, their minds, but eventually into their hearts as seeds and grow up in them and change and modify and adjust their lives and my life too, so that our lives are more uh, lining up with what you would want us to be. That our lives are lining up into holiness and righteousness and, and that the Lord Yeshua is being reflected in how we live. Darkness, we know you're lurking around, but you have no authority here. You're not invited here. And I'm telling you in the name of Yeshua to get lost, be gone. You're not invited. Be gone in the name of Yeshua. Take your hands off the technology and the lives of the people that are listening today. And once again, Father, we want to say thank you. And we give you the glory, the honor, and praise in the name of Yeshua. Amen. All right, guys, what I want to do is start off where we get this right. Okay, I want to start off when we left off last week talking about Peter. So I'm going to ask you to go back to 2 Peter 3.14 and we're going to continue on these scriptures. And of course, if you've been in this ministry, and I, I'm, I'm thinking most of you guys have, or if you haven't been in, in this ministry, there's some scriptures that Peter wrote about Paul that maybe you never knew why Paul is so hard to understand. And this is Peter talking to us about the apostle Paul. Second Peter 3.14, wherefore beloved, seeing that you, that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. 16, as also in all of his epistles, speaking in them of things, speaking of them, of these things, excuse me, in which some things are hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. So what is Peter saying in verse 16? He's saying very clearly that in all Paul's letters that he spoke 
in them in a way that is hard to understand, okay? And if you don't know or you don't study or you don't fast and pray to get a clear understanding of what Paul was trying to tell you, you will uh, wrestle with it in your mind, wrestle with it in your spirit, and you may walk away with a misinterpretation of what Paul was actually saying. And that is exactly what's going on in the churches today. They have misinterpreted badly what Paul was talking about in reference to keeping Torah or not keeping Torah. And we gave examples last uh, lesson where he uh, went through several different experiences and several different circumstances explaining the people that you are supposed to keep the law, not, not keep the law, that you are supposed to keep the law. When he talked about uh, you've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Yours truly, and maybe some of you guys, concluded that I don't have to keep the law because Christ has redeemed me from that curse. The curse was, I thought the curse was, I can't keep it anyway, so why try? I don't have to do it because Jesus took care of all that. Christ Yeshua took care of all that. And that is not what the man was saying. The curse of the law was that the law did not have a provision in it to give you eternal life. It was never meant to give you eternal life. It was never given to Moses to give you eternal life. It was given to bless you and to define for you what sin is so you would be aware of it and not do it. Christ came, clearly came, died, shed his blood for the remission of our sins, went back to heaven, sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. And through that, that's what he came down here to do, to provide the avenue for eternal life, which the law could not do. So the curse of the law is that the law couldn't save you. Okay? So if you don't know, this scripture clearly says that he wrote in such a way that if, you, if you're unlearned, you're not real sure you want to walk away with a misinterpretation and then go propagate, go tell other people we ain't supposed to keep the law and that is not what God is saying and that is not what Paul was saying. All right. Now, Paul was accused of teaching others not to keep the law, but that simply was not true. What he was trying to do is get people to understand that the law was not going to get you eternal life. The law was given to govern us as to how we are to live here on this earth. But the important thing, the front door, if you will, is accepting salvation through the death, burial, resurrection of Yeshua and the shedding of his blood for the remission of our sins. Without that, there is no salvation or entry into the kingdom of God. That might be basic, that might be elementary, but it needs to be said, it needs to be put out there in the spirit world so that Satan can't fool you again when any pastor, evangelist, apostle, prophet, teacher, whoever gets in a bema, gets in a pulpit and starts telling you that we don't have to keep the law because grace covered it all. That is simply not true. Grace was given for salvation. What's that scripture? We are saved by grace through faith. And I, that's a paraphrase, but that's essentially what I'm talking about. Grace was given because the law couldn't do it. So God gave us grace through, the, through what I just said with Yeshua to get us an avenue and the opportunity to receive eternal life through what Yeshua did. But after you get saved, what do you do? How do you live? What is God expecting of us? Keep the Torah. Again, this title of this lesson is Keeping the Torah and Belief in Christ Yeshua. Listen to this. It is even more important than keeping the law. Salvation, obviously, is more important than keeping the law. But in bold letters, capital letters, but keeping the law is important too. It was, again, designed to bless us and show us how to live upright before the Lord God. Yes. Now, flip back to Acts 21, 19. 
And we're going to go over some more examples of Paul. 2119 of Acts. And when he, he is Paul, had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are, are all zealous of the law. So quite simply, there were thousands of Jews that believe in Yeshua. And you know, that was a big thing for the Jews because they still believe Yeshua hadn't come yet. When he comes back the second time in their belief, he's coming back for the first time. And obviously we know that's not right. But there were Jews who converted to Christianity, if you can say it that way, but they were also zealous and keeping up. They were doing both. 21, 21. And they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses. Isn't that interesting? This is people talking about Paul. They thought Paul was saying, let me read it correctly, that thou teachest all the Jews which are living amongst the Gentiles, forget the law, forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs, the customs of the laws. Where is it therefore the multitude must needs come together? For they will hear that thou art come. 23. Do therefore this that they, excuse me, this that we say to thee. <laughs> we have four men which have vowed on themselves. They had taken a Nazarite vow. 24. Them take and purify thyself with them. Basically, you do it too, Paul. And be at charges with them that they may shave their heads and all may know that these that those things where thou were informed concerning thee are nothing but thou but that thou thyself also walk orderly and keep it the law so what is this saying paul would have never taken this Nazarite vow i'm talking about if he was not going to keep the law why would he do this because he they were accusing him of teaching the jews who are living amongst the gentiles forget the law but this set of scriptures we just read saying hey why don't you hook up with these four guys shave your head take the body and prove to them that you will keep the law you do teach the law you will live by the law that's what he's saying just to show it to them that you are not teaching against moses i just got through reading in second peter people misinterpreted what he was saying and misinterpreted what he was doing even the Jews did it. The Gentiles did it. The Jews did it. They misinterpreted what Paul was trying to do. Got it? Good. So, also, Paul had Christ as his Lord and Savior, and he also kept the law, both of it. Why do both? Why not be happy with, with, with just Yeshua as my Lord and Savior? Because it was never given to us by the Father or Yeshua to not keep it. It is still in force right now. Salvation is in force and keeping Torah is still in force. So here we are today with this information concerning Paul. He both believed in Yeshua and he kept the law. So it doesn't really matter what the churches or people say. Here is a prime example of one of the greatest men of the Bible doing both things, guys. The one person they point to that's saying we don't have to keep the law, in fact, kept the law and taught people to keep the law. People misinterpreted what he was saying. God himself never said the law was destroyed, okay? And it was not to be kept. He never said not to keep it moving forward. He said, in fact, keep it moving forward. People misinterpreted the scripture and came to this con conclusion. But guys, take solace. Because in the end, all things are going to be res restored according to the scriptures. Flip over a page and let's go to Acts 23, 1. Another example of Paul in the law. And Paul, earnestly beholding the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. And the high priest Ananias commanded them that, should, that stood by to smite him on the mouth. Then Paul said unto him, God shall smite thee, thy whited wall, or that whitewashed wall, for sitteth thou to judge me after the law and commanded me to be smitten contrary to the law? 
And they that stood by, revilest thou God's, said, revilest thou God's high priest? Then Paul said, I wish not, or in other words, what Paul said is that I didn't know, I was not aware, brethren, that he was the high priest. For it is written, thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. And you know where Paul got that from? Exodus 22, 28. You can read it offline. Paul quoted Torah. And he understood that you're not supposed to speak evil of God's leaders. He knew it, but he didn't know that Ananias was a high priest, so he spoke in ignorance. Here again is another example of a man that was accused of not keeping the law. He's quoting law to these people that just popped him in the mouth. So if he's not supposed to keep the law and he's teaching people not to keep the law, why does he keep going back to things and saying things that reference the law, the Torah? Paul did not have a fear of any man. And, and, and why didn't he just say that he was set free from that law? I've been redeemed from the curse. He didn't say that in this case. He said it, but that's not what he meant. The church, if they're using Paul as their example of a man who did not keep the law, and therefore we don't have to do it too, he's a poor witness for that because he did do it. Acts 25, 8, flip over a couple of pages. Acts 25, verse 8. While he answered for himself, neither against the law of the Jews, neither against the temple, nor yet against Caesar, have I offended anything at all. Again, Paul is speaking. So Paul's trying to get everybody to understand something. The Gentiles were not Jews. They did not understand, nor could they have known about keeping the laws of God, the Holy Covenant. So what Paul was doing, is he was telling the Gentiles about salvation through the Lord Yeshua, and it is not dependent upon them keeping the law. But after you are saved, okay, the earnest of eternal life, then you are to keep the law. That's what he was saying. That's the message of this teaching. You can, you are required to have a belief in the Lord Yeshua and keep the Torah. There was no requirement to keep the law to be saved. But the Jews were coming up behind Paul and they told the Gentiles, telling them that in order to be saved, you had to be circumcised. You can find that in Acts 15. I'm not going to read that. But that whole chapter was about the council getting together because Paul was going around, like you know, to all these different countries, preaching the death, burial, and resurrection of Yeshua to these Gentiles or to these uh, uh, Israelites that were living amongst the Gentiles, okay, and telling them this. But the Jews were circling back around him and say, hey, you got to, you guys, you got to circumcise yourself or you can't be saved. And you, like we've been pounding on it for almost two weeks now, keeping the law cannot save. If you kept it perfectly, you would still die and burn. The only thing that's going to give you eternal life is accepting Yeshua as your Lord and Savior. Okay. So nowadays the church says we are not under the law, okay? We are now under the law of liberty, the law of Christ, the law of the spirit. Guys, we're still under the law that Moses got from Mount Sinai. Don't let anybody fool you with these slick words. You're still under the law that Moses got at Mount Sinai when he got the Ten Commandments and all the other 600 is something mitzvah. Still under those laws. Check this out. Go to James. Flip over to James 125. And I'm going to read it in King James and read it to you in the complete Jewish Bible. Listen to this very carefully. James chapter 1, verse 25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he not being, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man should be blessed in his deed. Complete Jewish Bible. But if a person looks clearly into the perfect Torah, if you have a complete Jewish Bible, go read it yourself. But if a person looks closely into the perfect Torah, which gives freedom and continues, becoming not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, okay? Doer of the work, the Torah, that the Torah requires, then he will be blessed in what he does. 
I did not know it till I read it in King James. When you're looking into the perfect law of liberty, you're looking in the perfect Torah. Yeshua removed the curse of the, of the death that the law could not provide, eternal death. And now that allows us to keep Torah without fear or penalty or for any failure. James 1.22, go up a few verses. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. When it talks about be ye doers of the word, if you look that word, word up in the Greek dictionary, it means the sayings of God, decrees, mandates, or orders, moral precepts given by God. In other words, these are, these are the words that came out of God's mouth. And man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And some of those words that came out of God's mouth were the Torah. You're required to live by the Torah also. John 13, 34. Flip back to the Gospels of John 13, 34. And we're going to read 34 and 35. <clears throat> It says, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye love one another. So this is the same law that Christ talked about, okay, that was not given for the first time in the so-called New Testament. In fact, what Yeshua was doing, he was quoting Leviticus 19.18, and Leviticus 1934, back in the Torah. 1918 says, in Leviticus, thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. 1934 says, but the stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as one born among you, and thou shalt love him as thyself. Okay. For ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. And like prophet taught us, when you see God says, I am the Lord thy God. I am the Lord your God. That's his seal on what he just said. So he was telling us what Yeshua was quoting in John. He got that from Torah. Love your brother or love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love one another. Same concept. See, if you were taught that the laws were done away with, and not realize that Yeshua was quoting from Torah, the laws, and Paul too, as well as other people in the Bible they were quoting, because you understand there was no New Testament back in those days. They were quoting the law and the prophets. That's what they had, okay? So Yeshua quoted him, Paul quoted him, and other great people of the Bible quoted the Torah, okay? And not just quoted it, but they lived it. And believed in Yeshua. You might think that it had been done away with and I don't have to keep it anymore. And again and again and again, that's a false understanding. That's not true. God is speaking to the hearts of the Ephraimites. Our whole purpose, guys, is to go out and find the lost uh, tribes, the lost sheep of the tribes of Israel. That's what Yeshua came to do. That's in Matthew, if I'm not mistaken, 15, 24. I am not come but to find the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And that's our mandate. And when you find them, just like we talked about last week in Acts 15, 21, the, the first thing you do once you get them to understand that, that Yeshua is their Lord and Savior is you start teaching them Moses. You start teaching them the rules so they know what sin is so they don't unknowingly do something they're not supposed to do. They have to learn the rules. Okay, all these guys quoted Torah and the prophets, okay? And God is speaking to the hearts all of Ephraimites and people among, Israelites among the Jews, among all the people of the world, reaching out to them to gather them to take them back to Israel. And that speaking to the hearts is revelation knowledge and that knowledge is life for us. Just like we're talking about, I'm, I'm going to say I did not know these things until prophet taught it to me. I thought I didn't have to keep the law. 
I knew that Yeshua was sent, was sent to be our Lord and Savior, and I received him as such, just like my wife and my, my kids, but I didn't know about keeping the law because it was always taught to me, you don't have to do it. So why try? So when that revelation knowledge came to me that I am supposed to do it, I'm doing the best I can to keep it along with the rest of our family. And I'm sure you guys are trying to do it to those who have accepted this revelation knowledge. Don't reject revelation knowledge. If it lines up with the word of God, do it. So God is speaking to our hearts. And when revelation knowledge comes, that's life. That is literally spiritual life to you. Yeshua himself was and is revelation knowledge. And people have had such a problem with that that they hung him on a tree. He was bringing revelation knowledge all the time. They see what he got him? He was crucified. So a lot of people think that revelation knowledge, especially when it goes against what they think, is, is it can't be right. It can't be right because it's not lining up with my understanding of what I've been taught by my pastors and my Bible teachers. So it can't be, there's no way that could be right because if it was uh, right, my pastor would have taught it to me. My deacon would have taught it to me. My pop, whatever. They would know if sometimes revelation knowledge comes in an area that you don't expect it to come. You have to go check it out for yourself. Technically, realistically, revelation knowledge comes through prophets because God only reveals his secrets to the prophets, Amos 3, 7. Maybe it scares people that something could come along that they don't know something about first. Jealousy could have something to do with it. How come you know this and they don't know it? What makes you? Who are you, Ernest? I'm nobody compared to anybody else. God doesn't respect me over other persons. I'm just doing what I've been taught. And I know in my heart it's right. And I'm just trying to let you know this. I told you guys last week, part of the job of a believer should be, but part of the job of an Ephraimite is that we establish the law, Romans 3.31. Do we void the law through faith? God forbid, we establish the law. So that's what we're trying to do. Let people understand the law is here and you need to keep it. We're establishing and we're going against this teaching, this bad understanding from Paul, people misinterpreting Paul, that you're not supposed to keep the law. When in fact he kept it, he lived it and he taught it. People misunderstood what he said. And change scares people. People do not want to change and move away from their comfort zones. But change is also necessary. And change is something God brings about in our lives. God changes not, but people have to change to become more holy and righteous. And you flat can't do it unless you keep the commandments, the laws, Torah. Flip over to Matthew 7, 12, and we're going to wrap this up. Matthew 7, 12, we got two more verses to do. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would, ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets, okay? Again, this is another example of a command that came from the law and the prophets. Mm -hmm. Romans 8, 2. Romans chapter 8, verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Yeshua hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Again, this, this explains that Yeshua came and what he came to do. The law of the flesh leads to sin and death. And the law of the spirit of life in Christ Yeshua makes you free from sin and death. Got that? So everything revolves around the law. The Father gave it to us, and Christ Yeshua came not to destroy it, but to fulfill it. And some well-meaning individuals or church organizations tried to explain what Paul really meant concerning the law, and they missed it. And I wanted to just drop this in. One of my favorite verses is John 6, 63. And this is a verse where Yeshua said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words I speak are life. And we just got through saying the law of the spirit of life in Christ Yeshua, life, the spirit of life. 
The life is in the words that Christ Yeshua spoke to us. And a lot of the things that Yeshua spoke to us were direct quotes from Torah. He quoted Torah a whole bunch of times. When he was on the Mount of Temptation, when Satan was tempting him, those verses that he quoted were all in Torah. He quoted the Torah to Satan. That's what he was doing. And if we're supposed to emulate in our lives Yeshua, then we ought to be emulating Yeshua, learning the Torah and quoting Torah at our circumstances, just like he did. All right. So like I said, some well-meaning individuals and church organizations missed it concerning Paul, and we're here to help clarify that. Hopefully we've done it at least a little bit of a good job to try to straighten that out for you. But guys, keep the Holy Covenant, keep the Torah that the Lord God, Yahweh, gave us and the testimony in Christ Yeshua. Keep it. Amen? Amen. That's the lesson for today. God keep you. God bless you. And if it be God's will, we'll meet you again next week. Shabbat shalom and goodbye.